Good morning, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is February 28th, 2020. Thank you for joining me. Um, I have a lot to show you today, lots of free stuff, lots of other stuff, um, just stuff to inspire your quilty weekend. I have spent a ton of time stitching. Yesterday I got to stitch um, quilt all day. I made a whole quilt in a day. Um, for something that's going to be a completely free pattern for you guys. I can't show you yet, um, but I think that you're going to love it. Um, and it's just going to be like a great uh, freebie to give you for thanking you for being a Fat Quarter Shop customer. So we're going to start today with Farm Girl Fridays. We are um, offering this free pattern. So this is a free pattern from Lori. It is called farm fresh eggs and so when Lori Holt does retreats at the retreat sometimes they get a free pattern and so she decided we're going to release this one free so you can download it for free in the links below or on Fat Quarter Shop's website and so you're going to love the quilt that Lori put together she basically took blocks from both books Farm Girl Vintage and Farm Girl Vintage 2 and she used the setting from Farm Girl Vintage 2, which I'm also sewing, and I'll show you a little bit later. So what it uses from Farm Girl Vintage 2 is the Rise and Shine Rooster Block, the Free Farm Fresh Eggs Block, and then from the original Farm Girl Vintage book, it uses the Mama Hen and Baby Chick book, and when she sewed her quilt for the background, she used B backgrounds. So I'm gonna show you the quilt, and it's very farm. And so if you are a farmer or like farm things, you're gonna love this. So we'll kind of lift, let me go this way, okay. go that way. This way, that way, sorry. <laughs> okay, so you can see that she just did the chicks, the rooster, the eggs, and it's so cute. And she used her Farm Girl Vintage fabric, and she just used that setting. And so this is a way to show you, you know, what Lori wanted to do with all of her books is she wants you to be able to interchange them so that if you get one of the books, you can interchange per book so that it's very usable instead of just one book, one and done. It's one and let's keep going so that we can inspire you. And you can just see, she's got the rooster, the hen, the chick, the, the little, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then on the back, oops, I spilled my tea, sorry. Oh. Oops, I need to clean that up. Um, she put this 108 inch wide Ooh. on the back. And just up close, Lily, will you show her rickrack? So she used her large vintage trim in the rickrack and that really gives it a nice touch and the quilt that i sewed yesterday i'm actually considering doing this on that quilt just have to see if i have time so um that is farm girl fridays and the blocks from the last two weeks are here this is penny pig Big thank you to Teresa Williams for stitching these for us. She's gonna make that quilt using these blocks, which is the original cover. This is the Pretty Dahlia block, week 34. And this is quilt day block. And I wanna show you, I'll show you in a second this. And then this is Rise and Shine rooster block. And I'm gonna show you this because it's so amazing. Okay, Lily, can you zoom in on this? Yeah. Look at her backs. They're amazing. They look like the front. I think she presses better than I do. There's like not even a lump in it. It's so amazing. So I just think that's awesome. So I'm um, super excited. I wanna show some pictures of some Farm Girl Fridays, some stuff that you guys have been stitching just to show you how it looks in different colors. So we can do that. This is MGE Ward and um, that's her Pretty Dahlia block and she is using um, 
Farm Girl Vintage fabric. And some B Basics. The little scissors are from B Basics. And then the next one is the Stay at Home Quilter. That is super cute. I love the little pig. And then let's see what's next. We've got Daisy and Jack. Oh, that's cute. That's like dirt. That's like the pig on real dirt. <laughs> Daisy and Jack, cute. And then Said with Love. Okay, that photography is amazing. It looks great. And then Dan's Forever Love. Aw, super cute. And Catherine Reich Schneider. Oh, I love the yarn. I wonder if that's embroidery floss on the tail. Look at the tail. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's like a little, it's like DMC. Yeah. That's cute. And then can it get any cuter than this? Okay, that is cute. That's a Bonnie and Camille pig. And that's Lorraine Houghton. And then Valerie and Stitches, super cute. I like the little, the little uh, mason jar mud as the mud. And then Cindy L. Phipps, super cute. And then Squishimo to the rescue. That's so cute. I think we've shown her stuff before. It's mm -hmm. cute. And then Ronnie Bess, super cute. She's got both her blocks there. And she has the little um, edge on it too, the little border. Oh, so That's cute. Lori's That's Lori's. So just like an up close of the egg and the chick. Super cute. So, um, let me know if you guys have any questions on the Farm Girl Fridays. Super cute. So again, she just used this setting and just interchanged the 12 inch and six inch blocks. And so that really shows you how you can use this setting with so many blocks and it's so versatile. I think that that's gonna be like a go-to for me. Yeah, we don't, we don't have any questions yet. Yay! Okay. So Bloomtopia is our Make-A-Wish free pattern for this year. We have raised $37,680. I'm so excited. And if we get to like 50, which really means 70, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna drag Kevin up here. It's gonna be amazing because he is so shy. And I think he's gonna like have a heart attack if he has to come up here, but I'm gonna make him do it. Okay, so we have a Make-A-Wish. We, we are, we granted our second wish uh, this, uh, week we um, got to grant this wish he got to take his trip back in December and what he wanted to do was go to a Mickey to a Mickey um, Mickey's Mickey Mickey very Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas party and so he's from Dale Texas and so Dale Texas is close to Lockhart which is very close to us and so I just wanted to show you this that you know from your donations we're actually making wishes happen for these children and um, he had a great time. And we just wanted to show it to you to show that we, you know, what you do really does, even if it's just $5, you're, you're helping in a way that these families, you know, couldn't do without us. So that is mm -hmm. so awesome. Our release three is going to come out this Sunday. So um, when you wake up Sunday morning, you can go to the Fat Quarter Shop Jolly Jabber blog and all of that will be there. And I'm gonna show you the blocks. Release three is going to have a couple of blocks. You're gonna make a small and large. Well, I'll just show you. You're gonna make a small. So you're gonna make this. And then you're gonna make a larger version of that. And very easy. So you've got those two. And then you're gonna have these two little tiny blocks that are super easy and they're kind of used as um, like a joining, you know, they kind of fillers, I guess. So that is going to be available for you free this Sunday. And it's free so that we can raise money for Make-A-Wish. So if you would love to donate, we have a link below and that would be amazing if you can donate. Um, and I've got some other blocks for you. Deborah made these from the Stiletto Collection by Basic Gray. So I'm just gonna kind of show you. It's kind of, here, I'll do this. Can you zoom in there? Yeah. Sorry. Very good. So that I don't make a, drop everything. Okay, yeah, that looks good. And this, so this is Deborah's. Her quilt is gonna be really pretty. Mm-hmm. 
Well, these all are going to be, but. Okay, this one is Nancy's making this. It's Flower Garden by Lizzie McCray. Lindsay McCray. Super pretty. And Nancy has worked for us for, I think, 14 years. Wow. Long time. Um, when I think about her, I think about the day my dad died and how we walked in and we said, hey, you think you can handle this ship for a couple of days? And she kept it together for us. So I will always remember that mm -hmm. and be thankful for that. This crystal made this with the speckled collection by Ruby Star Society. Ooh. It's a rainbow. And um, she's using Essex linen for her background. Ooh. It's pretty, right? Yeah. And then we've got Harvest Road by Vanessa Gertson. Okay, this is Teresa Williams made this. Oh my gosh, her piecing is so good. She needs to be my stunt double. Her piecing, I think, is better than mine. Oh my goodness. Dang. Look at how pretty. High praise. I know, but look. Look at this. Like, come on, people. Wow. It's better than mine. So pretty. I'm going to sneak away with her stuff. <laughs> and then the next one, I'm not really. The next one is Three Sisters and Sue B from Customer Services making this one. The collection is memoirs. It's really pretty. Really pretty. Yay. And then we're going to show some pictures of stuff that you guys are stitching so that you can see, like, you know, all the stuff we're doing, what you guys are doing. And I love to see that some of you are using our quilt kits that are still available. And then some of you are using um, your own stash because that's what this is all about is to just make it your own and um, raise money for Make-A-Wish. So this is Sarah Case. And um, Colin and I finished block three. And that is so amazing. He's learning to quilt. And then J Riley 7979 is all caught up. And this is my favorite, I would say the Carolina Lily, it's probably my favorite blog from the whole quilt for some reason, because we were able to piece it instead of applique it. And then Paula Clausen, super pretty. And I think that is Tim Holtz fabric and that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And look at the like, look at the, is that like, I don't know, it looks like a um, measuring tape, or well, not a measuring a tape. Yardstick? Y yardstick. I was yeah. like, what's that word? Okay, <laughs> awesome. And then we've got Enchanted Peach Design. Super cute. So she's sewing from the kit. And we've got Run Rose 8. Super cute. Oh my gosh, she's piecing it together as she goes. And then Rachel Eaton, 0321. Super cute. And Mine Are So Fun. That's a cute name. And then Mary Pitchard. Ferber, super cute. And Amy Waycaster, Milam. She is using Cheeky by Urban Chick, so that's gonna be really bright and fun. And then Kimberly Roberts, oh, cute. And then Debbie Nicholson Chips, super cute. And then in the center there, she's got Bloomtopia Cross Stitch, which Ooh. is, um, we're offering the cross stitch as a free chart also to be able to make more money for Make-A-Wish and she is stitching on black. So that's gonna be awesome. And then Sandy Van Buren Emmons. And K Kyla, or Ky yeah, Kyla Robinson, super cute. So that looks like maybe some uh, Kansas Troubles, maybe some, um, those look like they might be some plaids from Marcus Brothers. Really pretty. Yay! And so we've raised $37,680. So we met our goal, but we don't want to stop there. We want to just keep going. And um, so to keep going, because we really want to just keep raising money, we're just going to keep adding free stuff because that's what this is all about. Like giving back to you so that you can give back to other families. Because that's what life is about, is like doing what you can for other people. And so this is our fourth finishing pattern and it's going to come out just to show you how nice it looks. It is a free pattern. It's going to come out on Sunday and I'm going to hold it for you 
and show you how beautiful this one is. It's big. It's big. It's a biggie. And so what you can do and what is helpful to do is we always give extra fabric in our kits. So you could always make some extra blocks and um, so look how pretty it is. It combines a lot of the blocks and our It's So Emma team designed this. I would love to give credit to who it is. It's either Crystal Nova or Jocelyn and I'm sorry that I cannot remember who made it but it, or who designed it, but it's so pretty. On the back, they put this red fabric, and let's see what this says. A little cheat sheet. So this uses blocks from the first three releases. It's the At Home Collection by Bonnie and Camille that's coming out any day. Jocelyn designed it. Terry from Customer Service made it, and Mike from MyLongArm.com quilted it. Yay! So that is, and I just wanted to remind you also that um, this quilt up here is a free pattern also to raise money for Make-A-Wish. The one on the ladder, the one on the wall is the main quilt. And then over to my left, we have two patterns that are also free to make more money for Make-A-Wish. So those two, so those are the first three. The one I just showed you is the fourth one. So thank you for everything for helping us support this great cause. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. Yes. There are questions. Okay. So we're going to start with Christy V. She was asking if we can get the National Park Fabric line. We ordered some panels um, for the newer collections. And um, not the older ones, but we ordered some of the newer ones. And I'm um, not sure when they're coming. I did want to remind you this is also another Ooh. free pattern, the bird. So forgot that one. Um, Donna Barshinger, amongst other people, was asking if we we're going to make a kit for Lori's free pattern, free quilt. No, but you could get the Farm Girl Vintage Bundle, the Bee Backgrounds Bundle. Um, the Farm Girl Vintage Bundles, we got some in stock. They'll probably be out of stock soon. We're just out of like two of the fabrics. Um, but I would just use a mix of her fabrics. She just used all her fabrics in there. Farm Girl Vintage, Farm Girl Vintage 2, and Bee Backgrounds. Or Farm Girl Vintage Companion Print, sorry. Uh, then we had a funny comment from Teresa who said, say Jolly Jabber blog fast three times. Jolly Jabber, Jolly Jabber, Jolly Jabber. <laughs> Jolly Jabber blog, Jolly Jabber blog, Jolly Jabber blog. Hey, she did I it. I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. That's funny. That's from like Gabriel Iglesias. I don't know if y'all got that joke, but that's funny. <laughs> that's great. Uh, Janet Hutcherson says, is Lori going to do a number book? I know she did Spelling Bee. In the Spelling Bee, there are numbers within that book. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to do a book just on numbers, but there are numbers in the book. Uh, Annie Shaw says, do you have an update on Bonnie and Camille's book with the blocks that asked to be sent to them? Yes. So we, um, we will show that um, when Market goes online. It's a Market fabric release from Moda. And so we cannot pre-sell that or show that until like May. And um, it's going to be amazing. Um, Camille was texting me yesterday. It's really amazing, and I get the honor of making the quilt, and I am so excited to make that big quilt. I want to see how many days it takes me. All right, um, and we have two super chats that just came in. Um, thank you, everyone, for your generosity. Debbie Chips sent one for twenty four ninety nine, and she says FQS is the best class act ever. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie. And the next one is from Rafael Guy uh, for fifty dollars, oh and goodness. they said, "Love you guys. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, That's and I so see generous. you post all the time. So, oh my gosh, we appreciate you guys so much. This means a lot. Y'all gonna make Lily cry? Over you there. are. I'm gonna keep it together over here. She's not. <laughs> That's why I'm behind the camera. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> and then Teresa had another great comment. She said, "Pretty soon you'll have enough patterns for a Make a Wish book." For real, that is a great idea. Mm -hmm. That is a great idea. All right, and then Virginia Bovier says, Good morning, Kimberly and Lily. I was wondering if me and my sisters would be coming out with a new fabric line soon. Yes, so they um, have a fabric line. I don't know if it's a pre-market release or market release, but um, they will have something 
that shows in either April or May, March or May. Yeah, March or May. So next week, two weeks from now, March 9th, our sales rep is coming from Moda to show us the pre-market line, that's what they call it. And we will be showing all of the new pre-market next Friday on our website, March 6th. So you can start looking March 6th. And I'm not sure if they have one in that bucket or the next bucket, I, because I haven't seen it, so I don't know. And so I have been sewing, like I was talking about, a ton. And it's been really nice um, because it really keeps me, I guess, grounded or, I don't know, just something about sewing I just love. And so I have been doing the Halloween Figs pattern. It's a pattern by Joanna Figueroa, and I signed up for our block of the month. So I get this package when you guys get the package. They deliver it to my desk instead of my mailbox, which is super convenient. And um, this is now sold out, but we have a new club that's gonna ship starting in like June or July. So if you're interested in this, you can do it next year or later this year. So these are the most, the two recent. I don't remember which one is the newer, which one I had done before and which one I hadn't, but um, I am kind of joining the blocks as I go to save time at the end. And then this one. And this one, I'm gonna tell you that I had a little bit of a trouble with this. I just, for some reason, was struggling with my piecing. So um, not all my points are as perfect as I would like, but I really like this quilt. And what I like about it is it's not pink and aqua because I do tend to make the same thing over and over. That's kind of just my nature. I like everything to match. And I love this because I'm gonna have a Halloween quilt. So that's super awesome. So that is one thing that I sewed. And I'm excited that I'm keeping up because that's the biggest thing with everything going on in my life and work and just being able to stay on track with something is super, um, makes me feel very accomplished. Another thing that I'm working on is Moda Blockheads. So Moda Blockheads 3 is going on right now. You can get all the information on the Moda Fabrics blog. They have some designers that are providing free patterns every Wednesday. And so I'm keeping up with that. And I am using the Farm Girl Vintage Underneath. 2. The blocks. It's over there. Sorry. Lift up your blocks on the design board. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I am doing the same cover. So the same quilt you saw when we showed in the very beginning of this video with the hen and the chickens. The setting, I'm going to do it with motor block heads too. So, and I'm stitching as I go. So. I'm going to have to stand up to show this. Ooh. So this is, the bottom is um, the star on the, I guess right, is my newest block. So it starts with like one, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have a heart block, but I don't see it. So there's a heart block from this week that I did, and I don't know, maybe I forgot to bring it. But there is a heart block somewhere. So we'll try to find it, or I might have left it at home. And the heart block this week was designed by Lisa Alexander, and I made mine six inches, and I made the units three inches, which is different. Um, so I made it really tiny. So let me know if you'll have questions on motor blockheads or Halloween figs or anything. Yeah, uh, House of Stitch and Stash was asking, where can we sign up for this one and is it still open about Halloween figs? Yes, so we can provide a link below. Someone can answer you, but we have an open block of the month. It starts in the summer. All right, Beth G was asking, how do I get the six yards of background fabric in Bloomtopia cut into a manageable size? Do you have any I tips? would um, just cut in one yard increments or half yard increments and that's what I kind of do. All right. And then Deanne Kruger was asking if you always press your seams open. No, it really just depends. If it's a lot of tiny stitches, tiny pieces, I will press open. And anytime I am going to press open, I will use, I will turn the dial on my machine one stitch lower. So like if I'm at a two, normally I would put it at like a 1.8. I just turn, my machine is very um, beginner. So it's like, I just go a little bit tighter and it does cause a problem when I'm trying to unstitch when I make a mistake because it's much harder to take out tiny stitches. But I know that when I press open and, and pressing on those seams that it's gonna stay in place. 
So we are just finishing our Summer Moon um, so along that we had on our blog. This is a book by Carrie Nelson of Miss Rosie's Quilt Company. So this is a book, it was a block of the month, and um, I'm just gonna show you the two quilts so that you can see just a reminder of the quilts because we're gonna be sending them home with the makers. And so this is kind of the last look. And so this one I made, Mike quilted this from my long arm. So I made this, I don't know, it's been quite a while since I made it. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was a challenging quilt because it's a lot of small pieces, but it's really pretty. And I'm excited to take it home. Yeah. Do you wanna tell people why it's called Summer Moon? Oh yeah, why don't you tell it? I, I wasn't there, but. Oh, okay, I'll tell it. Okay, so, and then let me show you my backing. Oh, this is a good one for that video, the piece backing. So we went to Summer Moon and we were at Summer Moon when we started talking about the book. So Summer Moon is a coffee house in Austin. And so we decided to, so I put my little label right here where my name is. So we decided to just name the book Summer Moon because that's where we were when we talked about the book. And it's a coffee place. So this is made by Gina. Gina Tell from Thread Graffiti. She does long arm quilting and then Mike quilted it. And so there's in the book, there's a vintage version and a modern version so that you can, and it's, you know, obviously all the same instructions, but it's just a way to visually show you so that if you are more of a modern person, you can kind of look at this one for inspiration. And if you're more of a vintage person, you can look at that one for inspiration. And then this is the back of this one. And then we were gonna show some shout outs of people who um, kind of sewed along and just so you can see kind of what colorways they used with this book. Oh, sorry. There we go. So this is Suzette Gianni and that is so beautiful. It's really pretty. Um, I'm not sure what fabric collection she used or if it's just a mix, but it's really pretty. It's kind of sea glass. And this is Common Cotton 17 Painted meadow fabric. Okay, I'm not sure what designer that is, but that's the fabric she used. Really pretty. And then Anna Lee K. Super pretty. It's all before it's quilted. And then Diane Beat. So it looks like she used um, maybe some Zen Chic. Really pretty. Grunge fabric. Basic gray. That's what she used. And then Bethy Quilt, so she, I was probably in the block of the month because she is using The Day in Paris by um, Sinchik. And then Kathy Contios Ricks, super cute. And so I just wanted to thank you guys for sharing. Um, all of what you do so that we can share and just to let you know that we can't show all the pictures. Um, we're now getting people who are getting upset that we're not showing pictures and we're not trying to leave anybody out. Um, so we're not, we're not trying to do that in any way. All right. Um, we have a lot of questions. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Gwen Smith said, Summer Moon, is that where they have the moon milk secret recipe? Yes. That yes. is the one. And they need to put one by my house. But they don't have one. They have one everywhere else in Austin, but by the house. Uh, Laura McLaughlin says, are you making a kit with those gray RWB fabrics? RWB? Bless you. What is RWB? I'm not sure. RWB. RWB. Denise, any input? I don't know. We're going to look, we're going to try to figure out, if you can tell us what RWB is, mm -hmm. then we can um, answer. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, Nicole Schneider said, hello from Checker. I'm so inspired to sew. Oh, hi, Nicole. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Karen Cox said, how do you get your seams to lay flat? Do you restarch as you iron each block? So um, I'm going to do another video on starching from my house, just a plain video that's not a live stream. OK, so what I do for my for my seams is I starch my fabric. Now, if you're working with a pre-cut, like a charm pack or jelly roll, and you need that full piece, you can't starch. That's not gonna work because it is going to shrink. But let's just say in general terms what I do. 
if I'm working with yardage, I starch all of my fabric, I saturate it in starch. I let it dry, it's really crisp. As I iron, I don't restarch unless there's like something I can't get out. I um, use a lot of steam. I always set my seam, press, and then I use one of the um, Riley Blake Taylor clapper, something clapper. It's called a clapper. It's a wooden piece and if you put it right on your seam and then walk away to keep sewing, it really flattens your seam. And when I press, one thing that's really important is when you press, don't do this because it makes your fabric wavy. So I'm very, um, you know, when I press, it's more of an up and down. Or if I move it, I'm not like doing this because that stretches your fabric. And my favorite part of sewing is actually the cutting and the pressing. I don't love the actual sewing part. I like the beginning and the end, not the middle. And so maybe because those are the parts that I like the best and enjoy the best, I go a little bit slower. So maybe that's why. Um, RWV is red, white, and blue. So uh, we think she was talking about the oh, Mackinac oh, oh, Island. Oh. So with that, we I am I don't have a bundle, but I did do a background bundle called Cream Moda Mix. And the reason I did that was those are the creams I'm gonna use in my quilt. And then I'm just going to use a variety of uh, Minnick and Simpson fabrics and Sweetwater fabrics. And honestly, um, I kind of pulled just two bundles and that's what I'm starting with. And then since it goes, it's going to go through February of 2021, I'm going to whatever the next Minnick and Simpson fabric collection is buy that bundle and just add to my stash as I go because I'm going to run out of, you know, red, white, and blue. And I'm just using like a bundle or layer cake or I have some extra charm packs that I've been given free over the years from Minnick and Simpson. So I'm just, if there's something teeny tiny, I can pull from that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we had a funny comment from Linda Hester. She said, starch has become my bae. Aww. I think that's funny. Yeah, I love starching. Kevin actually wants me to start wearing a mask because I starch so much. So I was like, sure, buy me one. <laughs> sure. That's great. Because I mean, like, or if next time I'm at, maybe when I'm at Home Depot or whatever, I can. I just, I never really go to the store. And then Gina Tell said, oh, Summer Moon, how I love you. Oh, I know. It was, Gina and I were texting. That was a toughie. A toughie. Well, it's hard because when we, when I sew anyway, I mean, I'm trying to like do my regular job and then sew and then you got tiny pieces but I think I made that in like a week or something. But it was, I, what I do is I use design boards, the Lori Holt design boards. And like yesterday when I sewed my quilt, I did all of it at one time, stacked it, and then I'm doing all the blocks at one time. And it's hard to do that on that quilt because all the tiny pieces. So it disrupted my flow of quickness. Right. And then our last question here for the minute is Nancy Piter. She says, can you tell us who is the designer of the quilt that will be in the sew sampler this coming year? That quarter shop. Yeah. Crystal or Jocelyn. I don't remember who, but one of us. I think it was Jocelyn. I think Jocelyn designed it and I think Crystal helped color it. That's what I think. And it's amazing. Uh, and Gina Tell said, Kimberly, I'll share a mask pattern with you. Oh, I'm not making one. <laughs> I don't have time to make one. All right. Okay, so my log cabin kind of one of the things I'm doing for stash busti busting is I started last year using the leftover scraps. So I have now 15 log cabin blocks. So I'm using the six inch pad of log cabin paper and I have made some more and I don't, here, I think these are my new ones. Yeah, these are my new ones. So I have been just making this as I go. So just to update, I have 15 now. So that's super exciting because by the end of the year, I don't know how many I'm going to have, but I'm hoping a lot. So this is kind of how my stack is looking. And I have, it's kind of, I have left all the paper on. And then I can just envision myself bribing my children to take the paper off. So that's been fun. And when I do it, I have to have the out of quarter. The other day when I was making these, I could not find my out of quarter and I was having a fit. I was like, where is it? It was in the trash can. It had like fallen in the trash can. And I was like, 
I just, I, I just couldn't find it, so I had to ask my son, and he found it because I was like, I just need it. And then I've been using this uh, press roller by Lori Holt, and this does help flatten the seams also, and my little Arthur. So that has been fun. And then Gina helped me with this. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Where's his face? Okay. So this is a panel. <laughs> that Sorry. Is his face. I, well, yeah. <laughs> we're, which face is up? Sorry. So this is a panel, and I love it. And I thought, let me make a rug, because Ooh. my kids like to lay on the floor because they're kids. So I gave the quilt to to Mike, and he quilted it with a little, and it's Mike the quilter at my long arm. And then I cut it out, like basically maybe half inch. I just basically blind cut it out with scissors on the edge. And then there's Minky on the back. I was like, you know what? I'm not very good at bias binding and I'm kind of lazy right now. So I sent this to Gina and she did an amazing job and put this bias binding on me Ooh. on it. So this is gonna go on the, on the floor in our front room during Christmas because then they can like look at him and then when they want to snuggle, they can just turn it over and snuggle. And so I think we have 38 of these left and um, if they sell out, they are re-releasing this in May, June. So if it sells out, we will have more. But I just thought it was kind of fun and this was just something I did because I thought it would be fun um, to do something like that for my kids. And I'm so thankful for Mike and Gina to help me get this finished because I obviously didn't have time to get it done. I was trying to get it done for Christmas and that just didn't happen. All right, uh, I also wanted to clarify uh, about the person who said uh, starch is bae. Uh, bae, B-A-E means before anyone else. So it's like- Oh, it does? Your, yeah, it's like your significant other or like your most special thing. So. Oh, I thought it meant girlfriend. Yeah, it can be like your girlfriend oh, if, okay. she's like, if she comes before anyone else. Yeah, I don't ever know what the acronyms are. Sometimes I have to ask. Lily and Denise and then I'm like I should have just googled it but I'm a I don't know what if it's a bad word and then I google it I don't know I don't want that in my search history yeah it also sounds like like babe like cute like, oh yeah, yeah. so pillow talk is a book that we published with Aditya Sitar she's the artist super fun a lot of you got to meet her at QuiltCon last week She's so inspirational and her booth was amazing. And we have been doing a pillow fight every week on the blog. So last week, this was the one of, this was Susie Quilts. She used the Mother's Day pattern and she used some knits. These are actually knits. So this was her pillow. And for applique, um, Lily, can you show up close? She did um, yeah. hand applique and it looks like she might've used RF loss. But can you show like, you can get closer, yeah. Sorry. Like the little, see, there you can see the stitches. So I think what makes this pillow really unique is just that wonderful detail of hand stitching. And it's raw edge. Super cute. And then the next pillow is Mr. Domestics. And his is the dot dot pattern. He used art gallery denims and pure elements, and he didn't quilt his at all. He just used a fusible, stitched it down, and then did a quilting on top that is half an inch apart. And his back is super cute also. So last week, these went head to head, and Mr. Domestic won. His quilting is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like a, I was looking at the color. I'm not, I think it's a light blue that he used. And then this week we have Sherry McConnell. The pattern is called One Step at a Time. She's using her fabric. So this is the front of her pillow. And then wait till you see the back. This is the back and the zipper is under there. Isn't that cute? She's gonna have to come do a video for us on that. Super cute. So you can vote for her or you can vote for Corey Yoder on our blog. This is the Lone Star pattern, and she used Boro Wovens by Moda. And her back, this is her back. It's an envelope back. So that's been so fun just to see like what people do, and this would totally match my house. I'm like, oh, I should make that. Um, super fun, so definitely go vote. 
and um, let me know if you'll have any questions before I go on. So I wanted to show you, we're gonna try a new thing, um, flash sales. We have flash sales every day. I'm not sure if you guys know that. Um, Kevin does the flash sales, and so I'm just gonna show you what's on the flash sale for today. We have an Aurafil 80 weight, that's yellow. This is great for applique. If you haven't tried 80 weight, it's super awesome. We have uh, one of Sue Daly's packs. We have a four and a half inch Lori Holt Cute Cuts ruler. And this will probably be the most popular. It's called It's the Berries by Jill Finley. And I'm gonna fan through it real quick. Sorry. Okay, can do it here. So, it's very licious. It's like blacks and reds, like a strawberry patch. Super cute. So I just wanted to show you that. We might add that as a segment. And then, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the story behind these bags. I love bags. I'm like the bag lady. I have like a whole section in my closet of bags that I never use because I just buy bags and do nothing with them. And Emma's, so one of Emma's dance friends' moms owns like a, um, like a boutique, like for, it has like bedding and clothes and jewelry. And Emma likes to wear these things called, I don't know what they are. They're like, do you know what they are, Lily? It's like a dress. It's a dress you sleep in, but they have funny animals on them. It's a nightgown, but it's got a name, and they're really hard to find. They can't, you can't even get them sometimes on Amazon, and they're very um, hard to get. And so this lady sells them. So we go there just to get them when she has new ones. I can't think, they're popular with little kids. They're really long nightgowns, and they have like Ooh. moose and pugs. And you can sometimes find them on Amazon, but not always in the size. So the moral of the story is I went there to get her, I'm gonna remember the name of it in a minute, one of these dresses. And I saw some bags that were really cute out of this material. And I bought them, but I didn't like the design. So I thought, well, I'll just make my own. So we have these new bags and they are so cute. I cannot wait to show you these. Okay, so they have um, been selling really fast. This is gray and see the bottom, it has a gusset and they stand up. So when you're stitching or appliquing or doing binding, you can put all your supplies in here and it will sit on your table. We'll show it in a second how it sits up. But it will sit on it on the table by itself. And that's what I think is the best part of it is that they're sturdy. You can see through it. And then Lily, can you show on the table? Mm-hmm. Look how they sit. Oh, yeah. We're going, we're going. Oops. Well now they're gonna stand up. I mean now they're gonna fall down. So they sit on the table. And so it's really fun if you're doing binding that you can just grab what is in, this one's not one to stand up. Um, you can just grab what's what you need. So super cute. And it comes in a set of three. They're not sold individually. They're just sold in a set. And these have been super popular. I am actually concerned that we are going to sell out. So I'm gonna grab me some. We at QuiltCon, it was so great if I got to meet you. That was super awesome. We gave away these free needle minders. They were free at QuiltCon. We have like 80 left. Um, we have them on the website. They are called the Bundle Up Needle Minder. They're just, you could put your scissors on it or your needle when you're stitching. And when they're gone, they're gone. So I'm just gonna show you guys this, but when we sell out, we're not gonna make more because it was kind of like a thing we just did for QuiltCon. Another new thing that we have is Kimberbell. Ooh. This is so cute. I'm so excited. I know. Look at it. So Kimberbell has a new kit and it's in stock. And this is her actual quilt that she sent us to photo. So really cute. Um, it's called, the fabric is called On the Boardwalk and the kit is called Vintage Boardwalk. It's super cute. It's super vintage. My favorite part is the, this. Ooh, mine's the, uh, this the, one? the little, the food stand, the hot dog. Always food, Lily. Yeah. <laughs> Always food. So funny. Okay, awesome. So we're going to show some pictures from QuiltCon, and we're going to show some pictures of Steph, your Sharon, and Kimberly's Stitch Squad, which is always super fun. 
So these, I got to meet them in the Bro- Brooklyn Haber- ha- ha- Haberdashery. Haberdashery. And um, I loved that booth. That was my favorite booth. And they were so cute. And they were so funny because they said, oh, she, they think I'm these crazy old ladies. And then I thought they said I was crazy. So I was like, I'm not crazy. And they were like, no, we're crazy. It was so it was kind of funny. <laughs> and then I felt like an idiot. Aww. And then um, that was the same booth. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah. oh, there's Lily. Yeah. Okay, so this lady, okay, I don't remember her name, but she um, called Elva and told her about Noki, because I love Noki, that they sell at H-E-B. And so she was like, did you get it? And I was like, actually, I did, and it's in my pantry, and I haven't made it yet, because I do love Noki, but I haven't made it yet. Mm-hmm. She was so sweet. Yes. Everyone we met was so sweet. Yes. And then she, okay, so they brought, that's a mom, an aunt, and a daughter, and they brought me starch, and I was so excited, I already used it. Like, that starch is gone. Super cute. Yay, another photo. I don't remember where I was there. I think we were, like, in between the vendors the vendors. And the quilts. Yeah. Okay. Yay, and then we've got some stuff to show you, just some stuff that, guys, that uh, you guys have been showing on my Facebook group, which is Kimberly Stitch Squad or Instagram, and this is Nancy Woolsey, and um, this is Esther's Bloom. So pretty, so that is Kim Deal fabric by Henry Glass, that's beautiful. And um, this is Jill Neeson, this is from the Vintage Christmas book, it's a Lori Holt design, um, and it's really cute, it's like Volkswagens. And this is Kathy Behoff. This is a brand new pattern from the Charming Baby quilt book. And it's called A Star is Born. And that designer is Melissa Corey. And this is Brandy Ramirez and super cute. And so this is a baby blanket and she used the uh, pineapple paper, which is very similar to the log cabin paper. And then she put it on point and that's how it gives it the swirl look. Oh. Yeah. Fabric placement, it's all about fabric placement. Yeah. It's pretty. That yeah. looks like candy. Brandy, you blew mine and Denise's minds. Yeah, they're like, what? <laughs> and this is Lily Gutro, and this is our uh, beginner series quilt that's a free pattern. Super awesome. Oh, it looks really good in those fabrics. Yeah, it looks different, right? Uh-huh. And then Diana Wright, and um, this is the Ultimate Travel Bag by, by Annie. And I love this bag when I saw it. I think she used grunge. Um, but it just, it's very, it looks like you bought that at like Neiman Marcus, is what it looks like to mm-hmm. me. It's very fancy. And then this oh. is Michelle Fish, and she used the crazy paper from Lori Holt. Wow. Cute, right? That's huge. Yes. That's amazing. It's like 10 times the size of the little boy. And then Diana Cobble, a big thank you for the free patterns. This is the swan dive, so this is a free pattern. Super cute. I love that fabric. I think that's Memoirs by Three Sisters, if I had to guess. Mm. And then, okay, this, okay, everyone loved this. This is Kim West, and she's been a customer forever, and she used, um, what are the names of those things? Um, Hold on, let me see. Peels, P-E-E-L-Z. So they're like what you would put on your um, artful thread to keep it together when you're done. And she put it on the triangle paper so the triangle paper won't flip up. And what I do is I use um, washi tape. So that's just a cute way. Makes it cuter. Yay! All right. So Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and then I have some other stuff. Yeah, so we had a few suggestions is what uh, Uh Emma's shirt could be called. Um, A muumuu? No. (laughs) Onesie? No. A sleep dress, maybe? No. A smock? No. A sleep shirt? No. Uh, Hatley night shirts? No. Okay. We ones or we something. Oh. We, I don't know. All right. Uh, question from Gwena Dottie. Uh, what is the best way to trim up the 14 and a half blocks from Farm Girl Vintage 2? I don't have a square ruler that big. So what you could do is you could put in the very center seam. You could measure from the center seam to the edge, seven and a quarter, because I think seven and a, check my math, but seven and a quarter plus seven and a quarter is 14 and a half, so you could measure from the center to the edge and trim, flip it and do it the other way, and then turn it and do the same thing. 
Uh, all right. Also wanted to say hello to Cruz Garcia, who was in the chat this morning. Oh, <laughs> he, he said, good morning. Hope you have a great day at work, Lily. When Thank am you. I going to meet him? Uh, Cruz, when are you going to come over? That's yeah. Up, <laughs> that's up to Cruz. Uh, I am having a great day. Thank you. Um, and then uh, Michelle Stafford was asking, what is Noki? Noki. Okay. So it is. Okay. So a while back, like a long time ago, I was really into cooking um, and so Kevin had bought me to Central Market. They have like classes on how to make it. It's basically a pasta that is made from potatoes and you, you boil the potatoes and then you like, um, like, you know, like if you have a garlic strainer and you put it through and you do that and you mash it up and it's so good. It's so good. I love Italian food. I love all food. Can you tell? Love to eat. <laughs> um, but it's really good. It's, um, it's more of like a filling, like a, I don't know. It's a potato-based pasta is basically what it is. All right. Uh, other suggestions for the shirt? Peasant pl a peasant blouse. Mm -mm. A wee sleeper? That. I think it's that. The other one was wee snuggle. Something. It's something wee. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Okay. So I have a couple things to address. We had someone call because last week I said white girl enchilada and they were offended. So I wanted to apologize, but I want to tell you the story behind it. So she thought it might be racist, um, and I'm just going to tell you the story. And now, since I'm going to tell this story, I'm probably going to offend my mother. Um, and she's probably not going to speak to me, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't want anybody to think I'm racist. So my mom, apparently, she, okay, she's not a good cook. Sorry, mom. She knows I think that, but she's not. And not only is she not a good cook, she's a horrible cook. And I used to be so skinny when I, ate, when I lived with her because I never ate the food. So what she did every Christmas, we never, okay, so like at Christmas, we would have the traditional turkey or ham at the grandparents. But at our house, we always had enchiladas. And my best friends that live next door are Hispanic. One was Veronica, who is now, she, my brother married her. She's now deceased. She's passed away. Her sister is still my best friend to this day. They were both in my wedding, and they're full Hispanic. Well, they would come over and have this white girl enchilada. And we called it a white girl enchilada because what it was, was a flour tortilla thick from H-E-B. That's not what you make enchiladas with. And my mom would put chili meat, not taco meat, in the inside, roll it up and just dump cheese on it. And we called them white girl enchiladas. And just so everyone out there knows, I'm not racist. All of my aunts are Hispanic. All of my nieces and nephews are Hispanic. And Lily's Hispanic, like I'm not racist and I'm not afraid to say things Denise. that are funny. And I didn't mean, I, oh yeah, Denise is too. I didn't mean anything by it in any way. I am just like flippant and me and my friends who are Hispanic, we called them white girl enchiladas. So I was talking about an enchilada at Taco Bell. And the reason I called the enchilada a white girl enchilada is because it was based on my mom's enchiladas that are horrible, but the enchilada is great, but it's made with a flour tortilla. So there's the story. I honestly didn't mean to offend anybody mm -hmm. um, in any way, um, but I am just very funny and I am happy to talk about race in any way. Um, I don't feel like I wanna live in a bubble and not be funny and not be irreverent. And if, you, if we live in a world where you can't say white girl, I don't know, like that just wouldn't be my world because I'm funny. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you think about my wedding party, I had five up there. One was white. Mm -hmm. So I'm not racist, mm -hmm. sorry. And oh my gosh, I have the best TV. So yesterday I stayed home because I was making this free pattern and I really needed something to watch. And so I have a friend on Facebook um, and she kept posting about this TV show called Love is Blind. And I was like, what is that? And then every time I got on Reddit, it would say, Love is Blind. And, they, and I was like, oh yeah, Nick Lachey did that with his wife, Vanessa. What is it? I turned it on and I watched it straight through. No breaks. I watched that whole series. It is so good. It's basically like um, 90 Day Fiance. The premise of it is they're in these pods. Have you seen this, Lily? No, I It is it. so good. You're not going to turn it off. Okay. So there's pods. And there's a wall between and they talk and they date, but they can't see each other. And then at the end, the guy might propose and then they meet and then they have 30 days and then they go to the altar. And I didn't really realize 
exactly how it was. And they go to the altar and then they either say yes or no, right there, all dressed up. Oh my gosh, I could not turn it off. And they have a follow up next week. So that was really good. And then I've also been watching Masked Singer. And um, I've never watched something like that. And my son, Peyton, and I, and now I think that one of the people is George Clooney. And so um, me and Peyton are watching it and I'm predicting he's gonna win. And then, so those are my like new things that I've been into. And then next week on Thursday is gonna be our live stream instead of Friday. We're gonna have it Thursday. And it is going to be special guest Lisa Alexander showing new quilts from her new Sisterhood of Scraps book. And um, it will be next Thursday. So, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And I mean, honestly, any questions about the enchilada? I'm an open book. Ask me. I'm not going to be insulted. I did not mean to insult anybody in any way. Yeah. But those enchiladas actually sound really good. Uh, so. No. <laughs> you Okay, mom, she loves Lily. Lily, you go to her house and you can tell me. It was like, and I don't know, like it was just always like a thing. And oh, oh, they're so not good. Sorry, mom. And then one year when we were adults, Oh my gosh, she was like, I'm gonna make enchiladas. And I was like, mom, no, please don't. Please don't, and I had to make her not, because I was like, my kids are not gonna eat that. And I need my kids to eat or they're gonna act bad. So I was like, please don't make them. And now she, she never knew all these years that we called her called them white girl enchiladas, Aww. ever. So now she knows, and I'm sure that I'm gonna get a call in Aww. about two hours, and she's gonna be like, Kim, why didn't you say that? And I'm gonna be like, I'm so sorry, mom. Um, is the show you were talking about on Netflix? Yes, it's called Love is Blind. Love is Blind. And so um, I, d I just kept seeing about it, and I didn't know what it was. And I don't really watch, like, Bachelor or anything like that. I think I liked it because I could watch it from beginning to end. And it was just good. I mean, it's just, I don't know, just something about it. I mean, being young and, like, in love and all that. Like, I don't know. It was just, I didn't think the... Now, Lily, I know what Lily looks for. It, there's a lot of bad cinematography, oh. if that's what you call it. So, like, you could tell, even I, with, like, untrained eye, could tell that they put things out of order that shouldn't have, like, they did it to deceive you out of order, and you could tell by what they were wearing. Like, they didn't have it all connected right. So they could have done a better job on that. But just the storyline is, like, good. Because I, I couldn't really, at the end, I thought that if you got up there to get married, you were going to say yes. I didn't know that you had to decide right there. So I think that that kind of took me off, and I really liked it because I didn't, I didn't read anything about it beforehand, which really helped. So. All right. Uh, other suggestions for uh, the shirt. Oh, gosh. Uh, the Wee Snooze or the WWE Sleepwear. WWE sleepwear. Well, I have a son that wears that. And I'll tell you a funny story about that. So one of my sons loves WWE. We don't know where he got it, but he loves it. And when I say he loves it, he has John Cena in his um, room and a cardboard box. And just so you know, Friday night, John Cena will be on WWE Raw on Fox. I'm advertising for them. I mean, not really, but I mean, I'm going to watch it because I know it's coming because we watch WWE. So one day... It was pajama day at school and they earned pajama day in second grade by um, behavior. And so, um, you know, like it's a reward. So one day Christopher went to bed and he had all his WWE on and I was like, oh good, he's gonna wear it. And so the next day I got up and he was not wearing it. And I'm like, what? He's like, oh, I'm way too embarrassed to wear that. People would make fun of me. And he had on like regular pajamas and I was like, oh, nobody's gonna make fun of you. It would have been fine. Mm -hmm. So guys, have a great weekend and I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye, guys.